the leader of a secretive self-help group now facing charges. I know you have more in that case, yeah, This is a crazy case. Keith Ranieri is now in custody. He is accused of using his position to trap women in a twisted relationship. Federal prosecutors are accusing him of creating a secret society of sex slaves where some women were actually branded with a symbol that included his initials. This is the man the FBI says has committed serious crimes against humanity, alleging he created a secret society of women he considered sex slaves and that some of them were branded with the symbol incorporating his initials. So one would say authenticity is being as you are. This morning, Keith Ranieri, the leader of Nexium, a secret self-help organization based out of Albany, will soon be back in New York, where he's facing charges for sex trafficking and forced labor conspiracy related to that secret society. On Tuesday, federal agents raiding homes near Albany in connection with the case. The 57-year-old, who members say is called Bengard, found earlier this week at a luxury villa in Mexico, seen here in this photo released by Mexican authorities announcing the arrest. I'm an interesting person. I'm a controversial person. But most importantly, I'm an unconventional person. Authorities say Ranieri created a secret sorority within Nexium that promised members it would empower them and eradicate weaknesses. But according to the complaint, female followers had to serve their masters and some were coerced into sex with Ranieri. Otherwise, compromising material they'd provided about themselves would be released. 2020's Elizabeth Vargas sat down with Sarah Edmondson, who says she was with Nexium for more than a decade. I was told that he was one of the smartest men in the world and just an incredible man. Edmondson filed a complaint with New York authorities that last March she and a group of other women took part in an initiation ritual in that sorority. She thought they were all getting tattoos, but instead, she says, they found out they were all going to be branded. It sounds like a horror movie, what you're it describing. It was a horror movie. It was the most inhumane, horrific way to treat anybody. And can you just stand up and point on your body through yeah. your clothes where the brand is? So it's right here. Under it's my right here. Yeah, right there. Right under my underwear line. In a letter posted last fall on Nexium's website, Ranieri said there is no merit to the allegations that we were abusing, coercing, or harming individuals. These allegations are most disturbing to me as nonviolence is one of my most important values. He also said the sorority is not part of Nexium and I'm not associated with the group. <laughs> Actress Catherine Oxenberg, best known for her role in the 80s hit Dynasty. My name is Amanda, Amanda Bedford. Whose daughter India is currently a member, says India told her she too was branded. She's anything but fine. She's in danger, in my opinion. She's in grave danger. In a statement, Oxenberg now telling ABC News, for months I worked to expose Keith Ranieri and Nexium. I want my daughter to know I love her and that I want her back in my life. And last October, Oxenberg's daughter, India, posted on Facebook, thank you for your care and concern. I'm absolutely fine. Great, actually. I would never put myself or the people I love into danger. And Sarah Edmondson, who Elizabeth spoke to last year, told ABC News overnight, this has been a very challenging year. And to see this news brings me great hope for the future, that the truth is coming to light and that my friends can finally be free. We have Dan Abrams back with us, along with our contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett. And Brad, you've seen and worked on cases similar to this one. What is your impression of Nexium? Okay, I think you have to think of Jim Jones, David Koresh, mm. charismatic leader, acutely narcissistic, believes he's special, mm. believes that he can solve all of your problems, and over a period of time, lures people in to give him money and sex. Well, he believes that, but how does he manipulate so many women for so long into believing that too? Well, to even Amy, be branded. Amy, you, you first have to sort of want that to begin with. You're, you're a person that needs direction. And so he offers that. And they're, they're very good communicators. And as a result, they pull you in. They isolate you. They keep you up for a lot of hours. And, and, you know, so you, you sort of shut off the rest of your life and just become him. Wow. And you cut off your family. And that's what we've seen happening case Absolutely. after case. Dan, we don't always see charges in yeah. these types of circumstances, but in this case, there are charges. Why? Right. We, we, we hear about some of these things happening sometimes. We think, oh, it's so horrifying. This is awful. How does this happen? But it doesn't necessarily mean it's criminal uh, when people are agreeing to do certain things. What they're saying is different here is that there was threats. 
that basically these women would give something that they called collateral, meaning either nude photos or they'd say horrible things about people that they loved. And the threat would be, you don't do what we want, and we're going to release that information. Uh, that's what they say is the crime here, and that's what makes this uh, different. We heard in the statement Ranieri saying he had nothing to do with this sorority. It had nothing to do with Nexium. Is that what his defense is going to be in yeah, all of this? Yeah, I think the defense is going to be anything that happened with me was voluntary, um, that I didn't force anyone to do anything. And this is where uh, prosecutors are going to need the testimony of the women. They're going to need uh, any emails, exchanges, any other corroboration corroborating information they can get to back up uh, the claims of these women, specifically with regard to the coercion. That's what's really important from a legal perspective. And it's interesting, Brad, because we, we, you hear from some of the people who are still in it and say, I'm great, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to, to evolve from being in an organization like this, a group like this? It, it, extremely difficult, because you basically have given up your identity to follow this person. And they, they just don't believe what Dan's talking about. They don't really believe that, that, no, this guy's great. He's taking care of me, et cetera. So to pull them away or to use the term deprogram them, yeah. basically, takes a long time. All right. Well, this story is far from over. We appreciate it, Brad and Dan. Thank you so much.